welcome to It's Upgrade Season, the only place to get raw and unfiltered advice on how to get your shit together one week at a time. I'm your host, Alexandria, and join me every Monday for the upgrade and every Friday for the wind down where I'm going to be answering your dilemmas. Small shifts, huge upgrades. Let's fucking do this. Welcome back to It's Upgrade Season. I'm your host, Alex, and you guys are key to making this show happen. So get in the WhatsApps, get in the DMs, send me your dilemmas, send me your questions. I'm going to be Agony Alex, and I'm going to try and not make things worse. That's the plan. Anyway, hopefully I'm going to give you some good advice. If you haven't already, take a little screenshot of you listening, share it on Instagram. We have got some amazing little prizes that we're giving out at the moment as well. And I really want to hear what you guys are enjoying. What do you want to hear about? What do you want more of? You really are such a key part of this. So thank you for tuning in. Let's get into today's episode. So in episode one, I shared a lot about how my whole fucking life changed (laughs) and how when I went through that process, I realized a lot of my business wasn't in alignment anymore. And I want to dive into that a lot more today about how I fell back in love with my business and how you can too, because I know I am not alone in this experience. It's so interesting when we see from the outside what's going on from everyone. We don't necessarily know what's going on behind closed doors. And often it was in those conversations I was realizing what I was going through, I wasn't the only one experiencing this. So I really want this episode to not just be about the process that I went through, but a support for you if you are feeling like there's parts of your business maybe you're not in love with anymore, or you want to just refine and upgrade and, and shift things a little bit to be in greater alignment, to be more fun, to really re-spark things for you and re-spark that love in your business. So the first thing is, like, how do you know you're not in love with your business anymore? It sounds like such a basic question, but I think we can be so in the rhythm and the routine of running our business, we don't necessarily recognize it. And as I shared, it was really in this conversation with a friend who was being in the in the role of coach for me that I realized I had just been going through a lot of the motions. And it gave me this greater awareness of what I'd actually been doing. And what I realized was I'd actually been having the Sunday scaries for the first time in a really long time. So if you don't know my background, I used to be an insurance broker in a previous life. I had a huge nervous breakdown, left insurance and started a health food business making chia seed jam. Everyone thought I was mental, but I pulled it off. But when I was in that corporate role, I had the Sunday scaries so badly. I'd be so grateful it was the weekend. I'd have this amazing weekend. Sunday would hit. Already the dread would start in the morning because I'm like, this is my last day. And then as the day went on, that sense of dread would just like increase and increase until bed Sunday night. I was like, I can't believe I need to get up Monday morning and do this. And it wasn't that bad. Like, let's make this clear. The Sunday scaries that I was experiencing wasn't that bad. But here's what I did notice. I was getting quite almost anxious about working. I'd be starting my day being like, what do I need to focus on today? What do I need to do? I was really looking forward to the weekends. I was like, I can't wait for family time with Jake and Leo. I can't wait for the weekends. So whilst it wasn't as intense or experience, when I began to tune in, I realized that was what I was happening. I was having the Sunday scaries. I was really grateful when the working day or the working week was over. And these were clear signs to me that something got to shift because I did not go through all I have been through. I did not leave corporate. I did not set up this amazing business. I didn't get to work with these incredible women that I get to work with just so I could be experiencing this in my own life. Like something had to change. And the first thing that I realized was it takes courage to change. When your back is up against the wall, when something has failed or you just feel like you're out of options, you have no choice but to change. And I actually think it's easier to change in those situations. I think what becomes harder is when you have created something that is worth losing. And I can share this because I've been in both positions and also I've witnessed so many people in these positions. I've worked with the most incredible entrepreneurs who have built these amazing businesses, but all those things that got them to that level, they've stopped doing, they've stopped taking chances, they've stopped changing, refining, shifting. And that's where I was at. 
I had had all this amazing courage in this previous versions of my life where I was leaving jobs and I was setting up businesses and I was making bold and brave decisions. I had the courage. But now that I'd created something so amazing, I didn't I didn't dare want to loosen my grip. I wanted to keep hold of it. And I, I didn't want to change. And I realized it takes real courage to say, this is incredible. There's nothing wrong with this. I just know that this gets to be better to start to loosen the grip and start to open the door to what that new reality could be. And that's where I was at. The business was working. My clients were fucking amazing. They were getting incredible, incredible, incredible results. And it would have been so easy to just keep building on that momentum and moving forward and pushing forward. But my heart just kept saying no. It kept saying not this, it isn't right. And not only would I have been out of integrity with myself, I would have been out of integrity with my clients at that point as well. And that's just not something I'm willing to do. So I knew that things had to shift. I knew that things had to change. And I knew by honoring a past version of myself, I was dishonoring my future self. And I knew that I got to choose future me. So that was the process that I started to move through. And I wanna bring this back to you for a moment because I know listening to this, there is a decision that you are putting off. There is something that you know you need to do that is gonna shift the trajectory of your life, your business, your love life, your friendships, whatever it may be. And I know you are waiting for this perfect moment or for this bolt of confidence that means you are ready to take this step. But I want to tell you now, all you ever really need is courage. And you already have the courage to do the thing. So whatever that thing is, I really want to encourage you right now to just lean into that courage, feel that courage and take that step, do that thing, send that message, send that email, whatever it may be. Lean into courage and do it. Because confidence isn't something that we find. Confidence isn't something that we just stumble across, you know? Confidence is something that we build and we build it through courage. And courage, we always have access to. Confidence, maybe not, but courage, courage you always have access to. And so that's what I did day after day. It was a cup of courage for breakfast. It was like, okay, what decision do I need to make today? What do I need to let go of today? What do I need to create today? So much of this rebirth has been building things from what feels like the ground up. I know it's not the ground up, but it feels like the ground up. It's got that fresh energy to it. It's got that fresh fear to it. And do you know what? I fucking love it. Like you feel so alive in that process. It feels so good to be so lit up and so connected and to care so fucking much about what I'm creating. And I want that for you too. I know that that is possible for you too. So really going through that process of leaning into courage, recognizing what needed to change, and also reconnecting to joy over obligation. I think this is really key when it comes to falling back in love with your business. And I think this is the pattern, talking a lot about patterns that you can fall into. I think this is a pattern that you can fall into. You feel so drowned in obligations. Maybe those obligations are to all the programs you've set up. Maybe those obligations are to your inbox. Maybe your, that obligation is to all these team members you've hired. You are so wrapped up in the obligation, you forgot to connect to joy. You've forgotten that you are the visionary, that you need to be tapped into the vision and guiding that business, guiding that team, guiding things towards that. And to sometimes honestly stop sweating the small stuff. Like I have let go of my inbox. I am okay with being like the slowest fucking person to reply to an email because I am so aware now that those emails are someone else's priority and they're not necessarily mine. And I've got some big shit in building at the moment. So it's okay to let the inbox away, let fall away. Let that be your permission slip. Okay, so the second big thing that I did was, first I embraced courage, but secondly, I embraced forgiveness. And I wasn't sure I would ever share about any of these things. And I am, whew, yeah, feeling a lot about sharing it. But I have been on the receiving end of some pretty nasty shit in the last 18 months. 
And that has been really difficult. I really care. I really love. And I really feel the pain when that love and that care isn't met or responded to in the way that I hope that it's going to be. Even though I know you can't control the people's responses to things, it still fucking hurts. And I think the other reason I don't want to share this is because 99.9% .9 of the women I've worked with are so fucking amazing. Like I am obsessed with them. They are the creme de la creme. They are amazing humans. I've become friends with so many of them. I adore them. And I didn't want to detract that energy and that focus away from them because this really is such a small percentage of what I have experienced in this business, in this world, in this industry. Um, but I do think it's important to talk about and not least because when I went through these experiences and I was turning to friends and coaches and peers and mentors and saying, hey, if this thing's happened, they were like, oh, honey, oh, honey, that's nothing. You should see this email I got or you should have, you should have heard about this situation I got in or did you not know that? I, I had one person tell me her, there were members of her mastermind tried to like run some kind of coup against her and then they all came back and apologized. It was weird. Anyway, like shit happens basically. And I was on the receiving end of some really difficult shit. I had abusive voice notes sent to me when I was very early on in my pregnancy because I had to move the date of a retreat because I was due to give fucking birth that week, can I just say? Like, I was, I was prepared to run those retreats, but I was gonna, I was gonna have to move that one. There were a couple other things that happened, and honestly, it just, it really got to me. It really hurt me. It really weighed me down, and I needed some time to just be with that and to sit with that and allow myself to feel all the feelings. And I think that was the thing I was missing when it came to the forgiveness piece. I think I was rushing to just forgive so quickly. I wasn't letting myself feel any of the sadness. I wasn't letting myself feel any of the hurt. I was almost gaslighting myself and disregarding all my own feelings around it and being like, okay, love, light, forgiveness. Let's just go forgive that person. And actually I needed to take a second, literally sit with feeling like shit and then be like, okay, and now I get to choose forgiveness. And honestly... I think once you've let yourself feel the feelings, the forgiveness feels so much easier. It's like you've done the pre-work and then the last piece falls into place with so much greater ease. Because after I did that, the forgiveness that I'd been struggling with felt so easy to do. It felt like, of course I get to forgive these situations. I forget to forgive myself. I forget to give other people. I forget to forget, I get to forgive and I get to be free because I really feel like forgiveness grants you freedom. And that is what I felt. I felt this lightness. I felt this freedom. I forgave, I let go. And I'm not dumb. <laughs> I also made sure that I learned from the situations that had happened. I have learned I am not going to be so fucking accessible that you think you can send me abusive voice notes when I'm seven weeks pregnant. To be fair, they didn't actually realize I was pregnant, but still, like, that doesn't get to happen. Like, I get to have boundaries. I get to protect my peace. And this was the thing that stood in real contrast in these situations. I was going from this incredibly loving bubble with my son and my husband and just so much light and so much gorgeous energy. And then there was this contrast and I was like, I feel like I need to protect this more. I feel like I get to protect this beautiful life that I've created and it, I don't get to be so accessible all the time. And so I brought in the most amazing support team. I have people who support me with messages. I have my legal team who's incredible. Shout out Lucy Legal, she's a fucking queen. I always, always am doing the self inventory, making sure I'm doing the work, making sure my side of the road is clean. And of course we get to keep get to keep sweeping up, we get to keep working on that. But I just realized I get to be really supported and I don't have to be so accessible. And accessible doesn't mean powerful or potent. Like they are two completely different things. And actually the work that I created, the change that I was trying to create was so much more powerful when I was doing it from a full cup rather than this depleted place of trying to give and give and give to everyone. So 
let this be the permission slip for you. Like maybe there's somewhere that you just need to let yourself feel the feelings. Maybe you're ready to lean into forgiveness. But as part of that, maybe you need to tighten up those boundaries. Maybe you need to stop being so accessible. Maybe you need to put yourself first a little bit more in your life, in your business, before you just let everyone else dictate how you feel and what's going on. So the next thing that I did to fall back in love with my business that you can implement and fall back in love with yours too is I simplified. Now, if you had told me I was going to simplify my business beforehand or asked me to, I would have been like, oh, ick. Like I thought simple like bit like businesses that like ran one program, for example, was so fucking boring or had one product, like whatever. I was like, I would be so bored doing that. That is not for me. Kudos for you though. Like I am so glad that works for you. Like I'm a big believer in I'm happy for you doing whatever you do if it works for you. It doesn't have to be the same as me. I don't have to agree with it. I just you know, obviously there's some exceptions to that. But like in general, like if it works for you, I'm happy for you. But the thought of having this simple business model didn't light me up. I loved creating. I love building new things, creating new things, new offers, new this, new that. Blah, blah. So I was like doing all these things. And then through this process, I realized I didn't enjoy that anymore. A previous version of me loved building all the things and creating all the things and always launching something new. But this version of me and this evolution loved simplicity. Like I want it to feel so fucking simple and easy. I want it to feel automated. I want to have fucking processes in place. I want to have tick, se- tick sheets. I want to have Excel spreadsheets. I want to have fucking automations firing left, right, and center. And I want it to feel simple. I want it to feel simple because I don't want that shit to take my energy anymore. I want to pour my energy into other things. I want to pour my energy into doing the podcast, writing the book, things that really, really light me up and make me so happy and so inspired. And as part of that, it gets to be simple. And this has been a part of this huge download I've had around abundance and living a rich life. For me, so much of that is simplicity. So much of that is actually leaning into a simpler, more streamlined business model. So much of that is about my life feeling simpler. I am so much happier living in Austin than I was in London because when I lived in London, okay, not only was the weather shit, I fucking love London, it's great, but the weather shit, you can admit that, guys. But my weekends were booked up for like six weekends in a row or like three months in advance. It was just, it was constant. It would be like, do you want to do something at the weekend? It's like, sure, I can, I can do it in three and a half months time. Whereas here, there's a simplicity to my life and that brings so much richness. You know, I have free time at the weekends. I get to just go around Whole Foods with Jake and Leo, which honestly brings me so much joy. We get to go on walks. We get to go for brunch. There is so much ease and just freedom that I feel in that. And I was ready to feel that in my business as well. I was ready to feel that sense of freedom and ease and simplicity and just be a fucking master at that as well. Like I, everyone knocks perfectionism. I'm bringing it back. (laughs) Like I want to master shit. I don't want to just be like, okay, I want to be fucking great. And I think we get to claim that. Obviously, there is a dark side to perfectionism. It can hold us back. It can do all the things. But I think that's not to be confused with just doing things in a sloppy fashion. You know, you get to refine, you get to get better, you get to keep upskilling. And that's really the journey that I want to be on right now, keeping things simple. So I have the time and I have the energy to keep getting better and aim for mastery in these different areas. There's actually one last thing that I want to add on this as well, which is, and again, I've got this amazing human design episode coming out. So I promise you, I'm going to give you the whole download on human design if you're not already uh, into it. But um, I was trying to run my business like a manifesting generator and I'm a projector. So for those of you who aren't super aware of those different, different names, they're different energy types manifesting generators have all this energy that projectors don't. (laughs) So a manifesting generator will often have a business model where they are launching new things, they are creating new things, they're putting new things out into the world. That works really well for their energy type. That was not working for my projector energy long term. Okay, so like they joke that projectors are meant to work four hours a day. But we are meant to be like the visionaries, we're meant to be in that um, place where we're kind of like overseeing, not constantly 
recreating and we just don't have the energy blueprint to do so either. So a lot of this as well was refining my business model to actually work with my human design to a greater extent than ever before. So the next thing that I did to fall back in love with my business was I stopped focusing on being a seven figure entrepreneur and instead I focused on being a human. Now, I don't want to demonize money here. I fucking love money. Money is great. I think honestly, money does create more freedom. That is just the reality. And, and money cannot be the only indicator of success. Okay. Because you can be earning amazing money, but are you happy? Are you fulfilled? Are you lit up? Are you creative? Are you inspired? How are your relationships? How is your relationship with your life? How's your relationship with yourself? How's your health? Are all these things getting space and time around that? And I feel like while the money was never the primary driver in my business, my primary driver was always trying to support women to create the most fucking fantastic life they have ever, ever created. I do feel like I fell into the trap, particularly being a business mentor of like, I need to be earning more. I need to be creating more. And almost how good I am as a coach depends on how much I am earning. I don't just want to call fucking bullshit on that because you could be a coach earning 20 fucking million a year. And if you're miserable, are you really fucking winning? And that's not to say the two things are linked. I think you can earn 20 million a year and be the happiest fucking person ever. But I really just wanted to rebuild the foundations of my business. So instead of constantly growing, instead of constantly aiming for more and in, in, in bigger numbers and bigger this, I was really tuning in with like, are these the foundations of my life that I want to build this upon? And the question here became, does this support the kind of life I want to create instead of does this support the type of business I want to build? So bringing your life back into the forefront rather than the business being everything. And do you know what? I'm just going to say it. I think we're fucking sick of the money marketing all the time. I think we're sick of money marketing being the only way that we can measure the success of our business. I think we're sick of money marketing being the only indicator of whether we want to work with someone or not. I think we have wised up to, yes, the money is great and yes, the money is part of it, but is that happiness? Is that joy? Does the business model work? Does it work for like their human design? Things like this. I think elements like this are really coming to the forefront again of like all these parts are so, so, so important and they all get to be part of the conversation. And I actually set my revenue goals with my coach a couple of days ago. And it was so interesting because as I set them, there were two things Um, which I'm going to be completely open and honest about. First of all, I actually set lower revenue goals than I have done previously. So as part of restructuring the business, I didn't want to be like, okay, let's get up to these 100K months. Let's do this. I want to be like, do you know what? Let's do this. Let's aim for this. But what's way more important is the energy from which that's created. I am only willing to accept this based on these values, based on this way of feeling. And I have always had that in my business. I just feel like in this season of my life, it's at a forefront more than ever. And I also think, and I will hold my hands up, I just don't want to be part of adding to a conversation where it's all about the money anymore. And maybe my marketing in the past has lent into that. We have spoken about money a lot. I do think it's an important part of the conversation, but I just don't want to lean heavily into it anymore. I I want it to be part of the conversation. I want it to be part of the puzzle that brings in all the other pieces. So the next thing I did to fall back in love with my business, and this was a fucking huge one, was I let go of the business being my identity. And this feels quite vulnerable to share. Um, I didn't realize how much I had interwoven my business with my identity until I got sick of my pregnancy. And as I shared in that first episode, there was such a stripping away. All these tools that I had lent upon, exercise, meditation, reading, breath work, all these things that I was doing, I suddenly couldn't do. And my business, which gave me so much joy, so much fulfillment, gave me so much purpose, lit me up, fired me up, sparked me up so, so much. I couldn't give to it anymore. During that time period, the only two things that I focused on were one, getting through the fucking day, but two, 
having client calls and giving everything I had to those client calls. So I reshuffled my diary at the time. So I'd have one to two hours of calls a day maximum. That was the maximum that I could manage. And I would literally be in bed till before the call. I would get on the call. I would give everything I fucking had. And then I would get back in bed fucking exhausted. And do you know what? Fair fucking place to me. Some of those coaching calls were some of the best coaching calls I ever did. I think because it literally was like, the only thing that I would pour my energy into that day and my focus was so hard on the other person. Those calls were amazing. And, and I realized that so much of my identity was being a business owner. It was being a business mentor, it was being a coach, it was being a mentor. That was who I was. And I had to really sit with myself and say, hey, if I didn't have this business, if I wasn't a coach, if I wasn't a mentor, who am I? Who am I without all of this? And maybe it sounds fucking ridiculous to you or maybe you're sat here and you're like, girl, I fucking get this. Like I would struggle with that too. But I found it so confronting, so confronting to be like, who am I without all of this? And I got to go through that process and I got to really fall back in love with other parts of myself. I got to fall back in love with the part of me who is a wife, now the part of me who is a mother, uh, the daughter, the friend. But even going a layer deep with that, I kept asking myself the question, if all this fell away, who would I be? If all these labels, if all these things I attach my identity to fell away, who would I be? And just really getting to know the core of myself getting to know what I bring to the world, just me as an individual without it being about being a wife or a daughter or a friend or a coach or a mentor. What do I bring? And what do I fucking enjoy? Like if I was alone in this world, what would I be doing? What would I enjoy again? And that was actually a really powerful process. It felt fucking brutal at the time. I did not enjoy it at the time. Couldn't see the joy in it. But now I feel so grounded in these different aspects of myself that I can move in and out of these identities and know that they make up this greater whole rather than being than being all of me. And when I was doing that, one of the things I decided got to happen was I get to let go of the title of coach and mentor. So that is not how I want to refer to myself anymore. I don't think it fits what I want to create in this world or who I am at this given point. Yes, coaching and mentoring is always going to be part of something that I do. I shouldn't say always actually, but right now it is still part of what I do. But I realized those things were actually keeping me limited. I attached so much of my identity to them, but it was keeping me small. It was keeping me in those boxes when there's so many things I wanna do. I wanna be a creator, I wanna write books, I wanna be doing speaking, I wanna do all these things. And I was so attached to those titles, there was no space for all the rest of it. So actually releasing those titles is one of the most freeing things I could have done. And I really encourage you, if you have a title that you use a lot or a way that you refer to yourself and you know, this could be if you're in corporate or you run your own business. Maybe you're a director in a business and you really stick to that title, whatever it may be. I just really want to encourage you as an upgrade this week, try on letting it go. <laughs> try on stepping outside of the box. Try on being like, okay, this is how I see myself normally, but what if I saw myself as this? What if I let myself be this? What are some other parts that don't fit into that title, into that word, into that way of presenting myself forward into the world. And I think another piece that's really worth mentioning here as an upgrade, which was not actually in this immediate um, rebirth metamorphosis that I've been going through, but something that I've definitely experienced in my business previously is letting go of results dictating how you feel. And I mention this because I see it happening still to so many business owners. Like if your business is doing good, you feel fucking amazing. And if something goes bad, you have a bad day, you take that shit energy and everywhere. I will hold my hands up. I have definitely done it before. And this was a process that I had to go through. I realized I would feel on top of the fucking world when I'd run a good coaching session or I'd had an amazing day of sales or like my client had had an amazing win. I would just feel fucking great. But if the opposite was true, if 
maybe I felt I could have shown up better to a podcast interview or uh, I could have done that video better or I just I like, could have done better or we didn't have a great day of sales. I would notice my energy crush so quickly. If we had a no, the energy crushed so quickly. You cannot fucking live like that. <laughs> it is exhausting and it is not good for you or your business, okay? So just coming to a sense of calm and groundedness and knowing that one day, one video, one decision, one no, doesn't make or break your entire fucking life, your entire fucking business. You gotta zoom out, you gotta see the bigger picture. And so much of that process has been about this. It's been about zooming out. It's been about seeing the bigger picture. And the last thing that I did to fall back in love with my business was stop making decisions from fear. Now, what I find really interesting about this is early on in my business, when I really had nothing but a lot of debt, (laughs) um, I actually didn't make decisions from fear. So I remember signing up to work with Nick, she was one of my first mentors. It was 15K, I didn't have 15K. I borrowed the 15K. I probably had about 15 to 20K's worth of debt at this point. I didn't make that decision from fear. I made it from a sense of expansiveness. I made it from a place of like, she sees everything that I wanna do in this world and the impact that I wanna create. And she feels she can support me in this. And I'm just so fucking excited to be in a partnership with someone who sees that and get to be expanded in these amazing ways. So it wasn't from a place of this has to work, this has to this. And that was just a mindset because it did not reflect my reality. Like. <laughs> I had bills that I needed to fucking pay, but I knew I would hustle, I would work other jobs, I would do whatever needed to be done to make that happen. So what's so interesting is I started to make decisions when I didn't have debt, when I was in a place of abundance in my life in terms of friendships, opportunities, money, all the things. That was when I started to make decisions from fear. And I think with the baby, knowing that Leo was on his way, I felt like I was on this ticking time bomb. I was like, this baby is coming in nine months. I have nine months to get my shit together on top of feeling the shittest I have ever felt in my life. Otherwise I'm fucked and everything's fucked. It was so extreme. Honestly, it was so extreme. (laughs) Like if you're having a baby and the baby's coming, please don't do this. Please don't make out you're on some ticking time bomb. Yes, there may be some things that you would love to do or achieve or experience before the baby comes. Please don't put this pressure on yourself that like time is running out and everything's gonna be fucking terrible. So I put myself on this ticking time bomb and I started to make decisions from fear. I started to invest in programs and mentors from a place of I don't know what I'm fucking doing, someone please help. And it was not a good decision. (laughs) I actually remember one of those mentors, like for example, telling me to be doing more in my business rather than less. And it just didn't sit with me, it just didn't work for me. They weren't checking in necessarily on what actually lit me up and where I wanted to put my energy into. And I'm gonna say something which is probably a little bit controversial, but you don't always need a fucking coach. Sometimes you just need to sit with yourself. You just need to sit with your own thoughts. You just need to sit and be deeply present to your experience in order to tune into what you want and what you need and what you don't want and what you don't need. And one of my best friends fucking told me, I remember when I was in this spree of hiring and doing all these things, and she was like, Alex, I don't feel like you need this coach right now or this thing or this program. And I was like, yeah, cool, I hear you, but I'm gonna do it anyway. (laughs) She was so right. All I needed to do was just tune back in. I think coaches and mentors are some of the most powerful things that you can you can do in your life. It's changed my life exponentially and it continues to do so right now. And right now I'm in a place where working with a mentor is fucking great for me. But I just want to normalize, you don't always need the coach. You don't always need to hire someone. Sometimes you just need to get clear on yourself, particularly if you're making that decision from fear. Like instead of hiring someone or hoping someone will save you, sit with the fear be with the fear, be deeply present with the fear, let the fear move through your body, experience that. And then once you felt that, maybe make a decision about how you wanna move forward. While I say I hadn't been making decisions from fear in my business previously, I did actually recognize a pattern, which I would say was fear-based, that I could only see looking back. And that had a lot to do with 
putting off big goals or big dreams that I had until my business was in a certain place. And the dangerous thing about this, as we all fucking know, is those goalposts keep moving. So those goalposts just kept moving. I was like, once I've done this in my business, I'll do this. Once, No, no, okay. Once I've done this, then I'll do this. So for me, a lot of it was like, write the book or be consistent with the podcast or pour more energy and see these things. But that day never came because I kept just shifting the goalposts. It was helping more women or helping this. And it was hard, you know, like I fucking loved doing what I was doing. I And I really adored the women I was working with. I wanted to support them. I wanted to help them. But then I wasn't leaving spaciousness. I wasn't zooming out and looking at the bigger picture. I was constantly just seeing the immediate. And when you're in a place of reactivity, when you're constantly reacting, you can't be in creator mode. Okay. And reactivity is actually you're in scarcity brain. You're not in your abundance mindset at that point because you're like, I need to do this. I need to do this. And I need to do this now rather than zooming out and being like, Hey, what about I don't have the quick win right now? What about I don't launch that thing right now? Or I don't go after that opportunity right now because I'm saying yes to this bigger thing, because I'm saying yes to this bigger goal, because I'm saying yes to a future version of me that wants to create something even bigger than this. And I think that is so important. And I felt such a sense of ease again in my business and joy and, and softness when I was in that energy of like actually... I get to go a little bit slower. I get to really focus on these different things. And I really get to do this at a a different pace that is focusing on these long-term goals rather than thinking that I need to be going after the next thing on this, this hamster wheel of go, 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 go. Okay, so three upgrades that you can make and fall back in love with your business or just tune up the volume on the love that you're feeling in your business right now. The first one is take a fucking cup of courage for breakfast in the morning. I want you to do something fucking scary. I want you to send me a DM and let me know what this is as well. Like, let me know how it goes. But I want you to put yourself out there, whether it's sending that email, sending that message, putting yourself up for an opportunity or letting something go. I want you to take a cup of courage for breakfast and I want you to do something scary. The second thing that I invite you to do is see where you can make things more fucking simple. Like it doesn't have to be this complicated, babe. And this is what I realize. It does not, success does not have to be complicated. Success gets to feel simple. So go through your business and think, where could things feel easier? How could I make things more simple? And then the third thing that I want you to do is I really want you to lean into this energy of what is the bigger picture? How can I zoom out here more and reconnect to the bigger picture and start working towards that rather than constantly being in reaction to the immediate, rather than constantly reacting to what I think needs doing right now. I hope you love today's episode. Don't forget to send me a DM and let me know how you get on with the upgrades in your own life, in your own business take a screenshot tag me in on instagram write a review hit subscribe please go do all the things for upgrade season i'm so excited to see you in the next episode 